before we get started, I did want to notate that I will be talking about the episode preview for the upcoming next week, episode 71 of Dragon Ball Super, and potential implications from that. So if you haven't seen that, I highly recommend that you watch episode 70 or just the preview, whatever you want to do, basically, and then come back to this as to avoid spoilers. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please subscribe if you happen to be new to the channel as well. And if you haven't already, on a side note, please turn on the notifications for my channel because YouTube will unsubscribe people. I don't know if that's been fixed yet, but better to be safe than sorry. So let's go ahead and talk about it here. Now, if you've kept up to date with Super, you've kept up to date with the spoilers, you know, the last few weeks we've had leaks and stuff like that. And it seems like the next episode kind of will be the introduction of the next arc. Now, talking about the next arc, we know that Goku will get assassinated, or it's 99.99% .99 confirmed that Goku will be assassinated. I wanted to kind of leave that window there in case some weird twist happens when the episode actually airs, or we get more information closer to the air date of the episodes. But, you know, basically going off the assumption that Goku will be assassinated by Hit, um, it does seem like he will be removed for at least the beginning portion of the next arc. So I wanted to kind of talk about that and the implications of that because, you know, Goku being the main protagonist of the series, obviously it's going to be a little different to say, okay, he's gone. We're going to move on without him momentarily and what this could potentially mean for the series going forward. Now, Dragon Ball, it just in general, has been heavily influenced by Goku once again because he's the main character. That's generally how animes do and, and just stories in general. Just anything you watch, the protagonist, you all always follow things from their perspective. So what I will say is that it's different in that the show may potentially try to kill off Goku. However, I do expect him to be back within a few episodes or whatever the case is. But let's go off the mindset that maybe Goku's just 100% you know, dead throughout the entirety of this arc, and, you know, he's he's not removed, because they'll still cut back to him, he'll probably be chilling with King Kai or whatever, and they'll cut back to him, he'll have, you know, lines and stuff like that, they're not gonna just completely drop his character, but what that can mean for the rest of the cast of characters is that it's a great opportunity to add relevance, you know, to other characters. Now, I did kind of point out around the time of, like, the future Trunks arc that, it was weird how they did it, but they showed at that time that they can add relevance to another character in that they allowed Trunks to be in the spotlight. That was basically his arc and Goku and Vegeta were just there to help him out. That was basically his story unfolding and throughout the entirety of it, they found ways to put him, Aspel or not, they found ways to put him in the forefront in the limelight with Goku and Vegeta the entire time, which I thought was really cool, you know? They showed that it doesn't have to just be Goku and Vegeta and everybody else, you know? Because that's something that they had established prior, and it kind of harkens off to something that MJ and I at Geekless TV, we talked about recently in a video, and uh, something I've touched on in videos before in the past, whether or not it's good that these characters are reaching these levels of power because it makes it harder for everybody else to remain relevant. Relevant. all the other characters like a piccolo even the half breeds like you know the kids and gohan it makes them harder to it makes it harder for them to um you know reach this level of relevance so what i will say is that this opens the door you know saying for once again just the assumption we don't know yet it hasn't unfolded yet the assumption that goku is gone for the entirety of this arc or at least a good chunk of this arc can mean that you know we'll probably get a little bit more of a mystery trying to figure it out i mean we know our, off the bat that it's hit we don't know if the characters will know off the bat but even if they do we need to figure out who hired hit why they did that what was the motivation for that and that could be a really cool way to see you know some characters that we kind of forgot about like the show kind of forgot for Got about uh get a little bit more relevance like i think it would be cool to see piccolo being detective piccolo you know i think that'd be awesome it could be cool to see gohan you know he, he appeared to maybe have been training at the end of that future trunks arc i don't know i'm not really going to talk about that because it could have been training it could have been just him flat out being tired i mean if your kid trunks was tired after flying after the time machine for 10 seconds so like i don't know um i don't really feel like him having a spike in his hair is enough relevance but you know it is what it is let's just say maybe he was training maybe he's gotten stronger um and he can now hold his own you know they did kind of hint at that in the latest episode where he basically survived that pitch from goku and champ was like hey you're you're kind of tough aren't you that's probably just them knee jerking us again as fans of the series as fans of gohan they've done that repeatedly where they kind of kind of put it out there and you know people eat it up so i'm not going to really go into that too much but it would be cool just hypothetically speaking to see other characters including but not limited to gohan maybe piccolo and maybe 
maybe Vegeta getting a little more spotlight. It is always cool to see Vegeta. I mean, he does get shafted a bit, you know, with just games and the way he's handled. And people were actually really dissatisfied with the way he was handled with a Raleigh, even though it wasn't supposed to be taken that seriously. People were still mad about that. Um, you know, it would be cool to see him maybe having uh, a vested interest in trying to figure out what happened with hit and maybe wanting revenge against hit because hit did humiliate him in the tournament because he lost a hit you know he he was powered down of course but hit in the anime is 100 percent different than hit in the manga um in the manga it's a lot more justified as to why vegeta lost in the anime not so much um you know, he, maybe he wants, you know, revenge against Hit, not for Goku's sake, but for his own personal gain, because as I said, he did lose to him in the tournament. And it's a cool way to really explore Hit's character a little more, too, because we always knew that Hit was a character that had to hold back in that tournament. And being a character that had to hold back in that tournament, we never got to see his full potential. Now, we saw basically how strong he was. We saw his potential as well in that he can, you know, and expand his Tokido Bashi, his time skip ability, and, you know, adapt to the power like a Saiyan would, you know, like Goku Black would continually do. He continued to power up throughout his interactions with Goku and Vegeta. Hit did the same thing in his fight with Goku. Goku multiplied his top power by 10 with a Kaioken times 10, and Hit was able to basically match that. Even though Goku's feet is weird in that he's able to outspeed stopping time basically it's weird but nonetheless i digress hit did get significantly more powerful but at the same time he did have to hold back and he would have won that fight as stated by goku because goku at the very least would have ran out of the form and his body was basically you know shutting down on him so it is a cool way to explore hit's assassination because you know you look at that preview and goku's laid out and um you know i he was already in Super Saiyan Blue, so it, it honestly seems like Hit just took him out, one shot done. Goku's dead. It, it just looks like Hit eliminated him, and that's awesome, man. That's really awesome. And then you see the agony on Goten's face and Gohan's face. They're in shock. Their dad is dead. He's just on the floor. Um, it, it looks like he's just flat out dead. You don't see Goku, but I mean, you can assume. And they also have the dialogue over that screen where they're like, hey, I'm dead. Um, you know, it, it, it does add a lot of layers and it could potentially add a lot of layers to these characters. I am going to temper expectations, however, because we've been here before, man. We, we have had situations in the series where I'm like, man, this would be really cool if they did this and they do the exact opposite. So I'm going to temper expectations for now. But I do want to know you guys' thoughts down below in the comment section on if you think that it's a good thing that they're killing off Goku, at least for the early portion of this. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. As I said initially, please subscribe. If you are subscribed, please turn on notifications so you guys can stay up to date with these discussions. I will have more discussions coming out. I'm going to trickle down on the Dokkan content. Not as much. I'm still going to do it for the people that do enjoy that. But I want to get back to my roots. I've been saying that for a while, but I've been waiting for Dragon Ball Super to do something that I'm truly interested in. Um, you know, the Trunks arc was cool, but I have been waiting for more stuff that I can really talk about and speculate about with you guys. So hope you guys enjoyed. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.